Hello, everyone. My name is Riley Dickens. I'm a consultant with Encryption Consulting, and today I have a short introduction on public key infrastructures, or PKI. Now, a PKI is a solution to creating and maintaining certificates within an organization. Digital certificates are extremely important to the security of a company. They're so important because if an attacker were to get onto the company's network, it would not be able to access any data or perform any functions as it does not have a valid certificate. Once it is found without a valid certificate, the attacker would be kicked from the network. Individual users are not the only ones that use certificates. Websites also use certificates every day. When your web browser reaches out to a website, it checks the validity of that certificate, as well as the certificate of the certificate authority that issued that certificate. It then goes back all the way to the root certificate authority. And if it finds that all of the certificates in the chain of trust are legitimate, then it allows you access to the website. This may seem like an unnecessary step, but it actually verifies that the website is safe to use, will not have any malware, and you can trust your data with it. This is referred to as the chain of trust as it checks the chain of certificates as it goes back to the root CA. Now, I'll show you one of the smaller models of a PKI. This PKI structure is fairly simple. It's a two-tier model using just an issuing certificate authority and a root CA. There are much more complicated models like the three-tier model that use intermediate CAs as well as extra issuing CAs, but we won't deal with that right now. Now, to begin the process of getting a certificate, a certificate requester will send out a certificate signing request to the issuing CA. A CSR contains all the information needed to create a certificate. This request also contains the public key of the user. This is extremely important as for the encryption process, users will create a mathematically linked key pair. This key pair contains a private and a public key. The private key, as the name suggests, is kept secret from everyone but the creator, while the public is available for anyone. The private key will be used to encrypt data, and as long as the user has a valid certificate, any recipient of that data that decrypts it will know it is safe to use as the public key is included in the certificate. Now, the issuing CA, like the name suggests, issues the certificate. Once it gets the CSR, the issuing certificate authority checks over all the information, creates a digital certificate with the public key included, and sends it off to the requester. Now the root CA is kept offline to stop it from compromise as it is the top link in the PKI. One other part of the PKI is the CRL or certificate revocation list. This list contains all the information for any revoked certificate. All CAs write to this list at certain time intervals. This way, they know what certificates can still be used and what certificates must be cut out of their chain of trust. There is another much faster way to check the status of certificates called the Online Certificate Status Protocol, or OCFP. This is a much faster method, but all it gives is the status of the certificate. It does not include all the details of the certificate as well as why it was revoked. We'll dig much deeper into OCSP, CRL, and all the other steps of the PKI in later videos. For now, thank you for watching and please come back again. To learn more about cybersecurity terms, including PKI, check out our website, learn.encryptionconsulting.com.